So at QB, I mean, it, it, you had QB1, and it's something like that Cam has said months ago, the Air Kings QB1. The conversation is who's two or three. And uh, as of right now, it's Nikosi Perry at number two. And I'm happy to, to see that, man, because there was a lot of talk about him. You know, people even saying he was going to leave and rumors and all that type of stuff. Uh, you know, he just recently had his daughter. Uh, so to be able to kind of focus all of that in and be able to be a part of this battle uh, to get that second spot and to win it, uh, because Nikosi Perry has contributed to this team every single year, whether it was in 2018, 2019, and hopefully it'll be in a point where he gets to hop in in a blowout and, uh, you know, put up some stats for us as the second. Third is Tyler Van Dyke who most people thought would be a red shirt candidate who may still be a red shirt candidate uh, moving forward, uh, running the third. But, um, you know, he, he's deadly accurate and the coaches like him. And, uh, you know, as long as my biggest fear would have been if he was second, you know, then I would have been like, oh, maybe it's a little favoritism in there. But either way, it was fair across the board. So you got uh, De'Aaron King at number one, Kosi at number two, and Tyler Van Dyke at number three. Running backs. Here's the good part is Cam Harris is the starter. You know, I talked about the two um, leaders in De'Aaron King and Cam Harris as being team leaders, not just offensive team leaders across the board. And to have him solidify that one spot because uh, after the first scrimmage, even I was amped and super happy with uh, Jalen Knight and, and Donald Chaney Jr. and the way that they ran all over the second and third and scout team defense. Uh, so it's nice to see them as ors. So it's Jalen Knight and or Donald Cheney Jr. It's not, you know, two and three. So they, that means that they both graded very similar, if not the exact same, over the camp and what they're going to bring to the table. And behind them is Robert Burns, uh, a guy that we have talked about for years now, kind of battling a lot of injuries throughout his career here at Miami, and we'll see what he brings to the table for the U. And wide receiver. Uh, the number one, the X wide receiver, is going to be Mark Pope. Uh, that's personally happy for me to see because uh, everyone has their rumors of the, the rivals five-star, ESPN four-star, uh, and everywhere else four-star. Everybody has the rumors about and their own opinions about Mark Pope, and I like to see he's put on weight. He's gained the weight. He's put in the work. He's put in the effort. He's learned that playbook. He's honed in on it, and he's our number one. Behind him is Jeremiah Payton. Behind Jeremiah Payton is Dazlin Warsham, uh, true freshman. At our wide receiver, number two, is going to be D. Wiggins. Everybody knows, you know, you go to my channel, look at the highlight tape, type in D. Wiggins. First video that pops up, highlight tape made by the host of them. Deep ball, uh, really good hands. Uh, really worked on those because as a freshman, his hands were atrocious. And now he's bringing in the ball, doing it to a high level and had a lot of production last year for us. Behind him, Michael Redding the third. Uh, they're, pretty, they're prototypical wide receiver right now, six foot three, 210 pounds off the rip. Yes, he's a freshman from IMG Academy, but you got to look at IMG Academy has been filtering out some big-time recruits left and right. So it's really good to see Michael Redding sign with Miami and be able to run with the twos, doing really well. Behind them is Keyshawn Smith. If you want to talk about somebody who the fan base is loving on, but Cam was Keyshawn Smith, man. He was saying this dude's going to be uh, a big-time dynamic wide receiver for us, bringing size and speed from the West Coast. And he said that way before any of these highlights came out of him doing exactly that at Miami. So that's beautiful to see. Uh, he's running the third team right now, which is pretty good. Now, the Z, our slot wide receiver, Mike Harley, the most productive wide receiver returning, most receptions and touchdowns as of right now. You also have Marshall Few and Xavier Restrepo, uh, three-star guy from South Florida, one of the most hardworking guys on the team. He's also changed his number from number 80 to number seven uh, to be able to give tribute to his fallen friend, uh, who was shot and killed, who was signing with Georgia Tech. They were coming out together, um, but uh, he didn't be able – he wasn't able to make it because he was murdered. Uh, so Xavier Strepo asked the coaches if he was able to 
switches his number from eight to seven uh, for tribute for his friend. Uh, so that's that's just amazing to see. At tight end, you have an or Reverend Jordan and Will Mallory. You know we've talked about them forever, so we got to see it. Let's let's take the next step at tight end. Behind those two, um, Larry Hodges and Dominic Memorelli. Not a position that everybody wants to have their opinions on. Offensive line. John Campbell, a player who has played guard for us, played some tackle, had a pretty bad Florida game, has actually come in and fully taken over the left tackle spot completely. It's his. He never lost it from day one all the way to right now at left tackle. Zion Nelson is behind him. And uh, noted, Zion Nelson went from 240 pounds a year ago this time to 312. So he's gradually putting on that really good weight. And uh, that's beautiful. At left guard, Usman Traore, Juco transfer. And behind him, Jalen Rivers, true freshman Jalen Rivers, getting on a two deep. That's really nice to see. At center, you got Corey Gaynor, who's I think is two years starting now. I was going to say three, but two years starting now uh, for Miami. Behind him, Ja'Kai Clark who started some games at center and guard for us last year. Right guard, DJ Scape, our best and highest graded offensive lineman returning back, moving inside to guard. He's backed up by Cleveland Reed. At right tackle, the transfer from Houston, Jared Williams, holding it down. All six foot seven, 308 pounds of him, holding it down at right tackle. And he's backed up by true freshman Chris Washington. Uh, so, it's, you know, Mark, and I'll stop there. We'll talk a little bit, and we'll go to the defense. But it's great to see – these freshmen coming in and contributing. Uh, you know, like I said on my, my live last night, you know, I'm not here to take shots at our own players, uh, but it's nice to see these freshmen coming in, contributing, meaning that we're out recruiting some guys, uh, and it's, they're actually showing up and making the plays that we want them to make and pushing those starters. And instead of running third team or scout team, they're on the two deep, which means they're probably going to be able to contribute to the team this upcoming year whether it's at wide receiver, O-line, or running back. So it's good to see that the recruiting at Miami is taking steps up. All right, wholesome one. Let's check out the defense. Okay, so we got our strong side defensive ends, Jalen Phillips. Okay, so strong side defensive end means that they are the left end going up against your right tackle. You, know, you think strong side defensive end, think of your Khalil Max, bigger, stronger guys. Think of a weak side defensive end, you think of a Bond Miller. A little shorter, a little, little slender, more of a finesse guy instead of just strong hands blowing people up type of player. So Jalen Phillips, 6'6", 270. Um, I've kind of I'm, – I'm done talking. I want to see it. This dude, man, I don't want to be a part of the hype train, but it's hard not to. He's – we just got to see it come out and be productive. Behind him, you have Javari Harvey, one of my favorite players from Surge 19 a year ago. Uh, and now as a red shirt freshman, he's contributing. You know, he's he's up to 250. He's able to – he looks like a player. Uh, they got him playing some, you know, even some special teams. You know, if you got defensive ends running down on kickoff, they better be some big-time athletes. And that's what Javari Harvey's bringing to the table. Behind him is Patrick Joyner. Talked about that earlier. Linebacker moving to defense end, who's really just always been a defense end. Had to play linebacker in a pinch. Behind him, Quentin Williams, a dude I was able to meet when I was down in Miami, a really humble young man, uh, know his father, so he's a really good kid, man. And it's crazy to think that when you start recruiting different, some of the young men that walk in, I don't know the last time we had a 6'4", 260-pound true freshman just walking through the door. So you, now as a strength and conditioning and nutrition staff, you just got to reshape that body because goodness gracious, that dude was dense. Mark, like I clapped him up and brought him in for the hug, and he was like, Doom. I was like, oh, good God. Yeah, you're a freshman? Yeah. So, hey, we're going to see where we can take it from there. Weak side defense in. So now they're going up against the left tackle on the other side. Quincy Roche, transfer from Temple. 26 career sacks at Temple. If we could get half of that, I would be ultra happy for him bringing that to the U. Uh, behind him, you have Cam Williams, red shirt freshman. Six foot five, 250 pounds. So he's putting on the weight. 
contributing pretty well, running the twos. Behind him, Chance Williams, four-star recruit, uh, edge rusher, a name that was really infamous about a year ago. Uh, you know, Cam talked about it. I talked about it. He wanted to go SEC. Uh, and then he had one conversation with Coach Manny Diaz. He's like, you know what? I'm with Miami, and I'm going with my guard brother, Jalen Rivers. So that's that's great to see that he's contributing. Uh, he was running with the twos. I don't know what happened. Cam has actually – Cam Williams has been on a big-time roll the last couple of weeks in practice. So maybe that's what the switch was. But I think it will be a continuous battle uh, throughout the season there as the backups. Move over to defensive tackle. Three technique. So outside shade of the guard, guys that shoot the gaps. Um, instead of taking on double teams, think of your Warren Saps, think of your Aaron Donalds. So you got Nick, ugh, Nicosi Perry. Nasty Nesta Silvera. All right, so you got Jordan Miller behind Nesta Silvera. I'm still wondering why Jordan Miller is playing three technique, but he's 6'4", 318, so maybe he's just that athletic. So we'll see. That's what he's running behind Nesta Silvera. You also have Jason Blissett and Elijah Roberts, uh, who were recruited defensive ends to come in and play the three technique uh, defensive tackle. They have one technique defensive tackle, which means they're the bigger guys. So you're talking about your Haluli Nantes. You're talking about your Indomitian Sues, your Vince Wilforks. They're taking on doubles. You need your bigger guys here. And you're going to have John Ford, who's 6'5", 318. Jared Harrison Hunt, 6'4", 280. Still a little confused on why he's a one technique, but neither here nor there. And Jaleer Holly, who's 6'2", about 280, 290. Your weak side linebacker, you have Zach McLeod as our starter. Behind him, Wayman Steed, Avery Huff, and Tyreek Austin Cave. The middle linebacker, B.J. Jennings. Behind him, Sam Brooks, a name we've talked about a lot on here, and Corey Flagg Jr., two freshmen. Our striker position is a battle between Gilbert Frierson and Keontra Smith. Uh, so there's an or there. They don't know which one's the starter yet, so it's going to be kind of a game night decision, game time decision of who's going to run out first. But, Mark, as you know, and I've tried to educate my you know, my subscribers on, college ball, you have your starters, but it's about the snap count. You know, because you may have a starter and a backup, and let's say there's 80 defensive plays, Mark, and they both play 40 snaps. Is it, you know, the other guy's a starter, but we were on the field the exact amount of time, you know, exact amount of snaps. So keep that in mind. At cornerback, you have Al Blaze Jr., who's our pencil in number one. You know, he's a guy that kind of separated between him and DJ Ivy. Behind him, you have to Corey Couch and Isaiah Dunson, athletic uh, cornerback from Georgia. The number two corner spot in depth chart is going to be DJ Ivy, followed up by Christian Williams, four-star recruit uh, from Louisiana. Behind them is Marcus Clark from Orange Park, Orlando, Florida. Uh, Three-star recruit guy who's a special teams Ace guy that I really love from the for, uh, class of 2020. Our nickel is between Takori Couch and Marcus Clark. At free safety, you have a battle where it's Bubba Bowden and Gervin Hall. So it's Bubba Bowden or Gervin Hall. Behind them is Keyshawn Washington and Jalen Harrell. At strong safety, Bubba Bowden is also an or with Amari Carter. So he's well, Bowden is doing big things, man. He could be a starter at free or strong, wherever we want to go with it. But all three of those um, men are going to play. Gervin Hall, Bubba Bowden, and Amari Carter will play a lot of ball as our three safeties, three returning safeties. Uh, and behind them, that strong safety is Brian Balaam. Kicker, Jose Borregales, FIU all-time kicker, all-time leader in points scored. Your punter is Lou Headley. Probably should have been the offensive MVP last year. That was the most snap, most punts I've ever seen. Goodness gracious, Mark. At kick return, listen to this, Mark. Pope. Mark Pope is our kick return. And punt returner. That is crazy. That is crazy. Mark Pope is just doing things. He's the number one wide receiver at X, and he's our punt and kick returner. So he's going to bring something to the table, man. I can't wait for him to show everybody and show me because I, I don't know what he's been doing, but he must be doing something right. Behind Mark Pope at kick return or next to him is going to be Cam Harris, followed up by um, Harley, Mike Harley. And you're also going to have Jalen Knighton. And that punt return is a little weird because you got Mark Pope, but behind him, 
It's Dervin Hall starting free safety. So we'll see what that. And then Xavier Restrepo, uh, a freshman slot receiver, is uh, the third stream punt returner. So that's our depth chart, man. And that's the depth chart for UAB. And the coaches have made it known this isn't a depth chart for the 2020 season. It's a depth chart for UAB. So for players who are upset or have questions, you got to keep competing uh, if you want, especially with a lot of ors in there or ands in there. You got to be able to contribute and fight and get some more PT.